Hello, this is a review of this knife, the Bradford Guardian 4 in Vanitas 4E Steel. This was sent to me by my buddy Chris for steel testing and then he offered me a price that I could not refuse because um, it came with this awesome Armatus carry sheath for it and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good deal. So thank you Chris and um, I've really enjoyed having this knife and using it. It's a great little companion piece. This is about my, this is my favorite type of fixed blade knife. This is the size and just general capability that I gravitate towards. I've had my time with the big choppers and the uber thick knives. There may be a Falcon even A1 Pro or a Cold Steel Gurkha Kuka on my horizon just a little bit, but for in terms of actual use and putting on my belt and actually doing yard work with, this is my sweet spot. Four inch-ish blades, really like them. So this one here has done a really good job of being that, but first of all, we're gonna go through the, well, somewhat boring stuff, but other guys love it, the specs and the size comparisons. So let's have a look. Alrighty, just the specs of the knife, so we've got a cutting edge of 10.3 centimeters. that's about 4 inches from where the silver part starts to where it finishes, including the curve. You've got the blade from the end of the handle, where the handle terminates, that's 12 centimeters, it's about 4.7 inches. And you've got the handle of 11 centimeters, about 4.3 inches, right to the end there. Uh, you've got the handle width of 23 millimeters, 2.3 centimeters. that's just under an inch, 0.3 nine inches. The blade thickness, 3.5 millimeters, about 0.14 of an inch. Uh, the weight of this thing is 184 grams, that's 6.4 ounces without the sheath. Uh, this is Vanitas 4E steel, uh, and on the Rockwell scale, this measures it between 62 or 63 Rockwell, or for the British viewers, about three and a half Vinnie Joneses. I say, that is rather hard. Mmm. All right, so now the numbers are out of the way, I'll show you it next to some other knives. This is it next to the Gerber Strong Arm, a slightly larger, thicker, more sort of hard-working knife, I guess you would say. A bit more of a, a big dull tool for big dull jobs. This is it next to the Spyderco Mule. The Mule series is Spyderco's sort of experimental uh, steel line of knives where they try the different steels on a very similar pattern to each other. There's been about 26 of them so far, I do believe. This is it next to the Gurkha Kukri from the Kukri house. This is a traditional style Nepalese Kukri. This is it next to the CRKT Hishu, which is a short sword. And this is it next to the Spyderco Waterway in LC200N, a great little companion knife, a little bit bigger. And also this is it next to my EDC, the Spyderco Delica, And also next to some uh, other knives just for thickness, you can see it's quite a bit thicker than the Mule and quite a bit thinner than the uh, Gerber Strong Arm. So in terms of the blade performance, it's got a really nice uh, degree of sort of, it's thin behind the edge but without being fragile. So you can put it to work in your outdoor tasks but it's also gonna cut quite well if you use it as a bit of like a kitchen knife or a camp kitchen knife or whatever. And it actually fills that role really, really well. It's just got a very sort of standard blade shape um, and it's got a low point on the blade that is lower than the, um, the lowest point on the handle. So you can actually do some pretty decent full surface cutting with this blade. It's really nicely designed, really well ground. The thinness behind the edge starts properly behind this first bit of ricasso here, so really, really properly done, nice edge. You know, some companies just really struggle with this last portion of the blade. Not these guys, this is really well, really well done. 
Um, it's got some good positive jimping on the back there to lock your thumb into while you're doing your feather stick or your tactical applications, whatever you're doing. Um, but yeah, in hammer grip, it's really good as well. Just wrapping your hand around it, no worries at all. Blade sits sort of nicely ahead of your index finger there. You can squeeze right up on it. Uh, you can dig in pretty well. You might end up wearing just a little bit of that nicely, you know, all the way to the edge edge in your index finger if you go really too close to it. But overall, it's a really successful forward finger chord blade. I really, really like it. Vanner's four steel on this knife here did really well. I can't recall the exact result, but it was over 800 or maybe 790. Really, really good result in the rope cut test with the 17 degree mirror polished edge and it's dropped back really easily. As I said, um, Vanitas 4E, I've said this before I believe, strikes me as a bit of a blend of say 3V and like K390 or something like that, somewhere in the middle between two of the two capabilities. Like it's got good sort of impact resistance but also good sort of fine edge holding as well. So really, really good steel almost like a, a dream steel for a, a tool steel at least. Not a stainless steel, not particularly. Uh, it's why they've blackwashed it here. But um, yeah, for your, your knife guy uses, for your outdoor stuff, it's gonna do really, really well. Just make sure you, you take care of it corrosion wise. That being said, the uh, blade coating here is like a bit of a black wash. I've put this through uh, some wooden stuff and it stayed on, hasn't sort of peeled off. It's like the cert knife surface is stained. It just feels like metal, not like paint or anything like that. So it is like a wash type finish. I don't know the proper name for it. As I said, I've just kind of got this knife and used it, just kind of commenting on it without using the official terminologies. And I'm sure there is official terminologies. But yes, really successful blade. Love the shape. Got a really nice point that you can use for sort of fetching and retrieving things. Really do a great job on the blade. And uh, let's look at me using it, shall we? The handle is a rather chunky, sort of very hand-filling handle. This may be a bit much for people with, uh, you know, hands on the smaller side. It's a, um, it's got a degree of blockiness to it. I think owing to this part of the handle here, I don't mind that at all. But yes, I reckon if you had slightly smaller hands than me, I've got larger hands. I wear the large size gloves. Um, but yeah, if you had medium to small, you might start feeling a little bit too many of these corners without your hand kind of just wrapping comfortably around them. So I don't know, it's really good for my grip. I, it fits my hand really well. And again, handles a lot like shoes. Um, anyone's foot fits like, you know, an Ugg boot or a Croc, particularly quite well. But um, when you make a handle with grooves in it, you're sort of risking alienating some folk, but really hitting it off with others. I think this is still largely pretty simple. This part here is simple. It's just this choil, has some extra stock here too. Just, just so you're aware, I would probably, if you've got a hand that is smaller, um, try and get one of these in hand before you buy it. That's all I'd say. Or perhaps shop down to the Guardian 3. You know, that's another option too. Um, it's The handles are fixed with sort of somewhat proprietary hardware. Although I've seen these bits in bit kits, so it's not like you have to get it off of Bradford. But um, yeah, it's certainly not just a Torx or a Phillips or whatever. That's fine. I don't see a need for taking off the handles. It's nice that there still is the opportunity to because being a non-stainless steel, you may want to check after five years or whatever if there's any rust underneath it. But uh, yeah, it's just a nice little touch, but non-essential. Um, handle tapers back to a um, sort of another pinch point here. So you've got sort of 
uh, a larger sort of bulbous port portion in the middle, which as I said, is just almost an inch. And then it goes back to a lanyard hole. If you're a lanyard guy, you're in luck. I'm not, so it shall stay empty. This is a hole that I won't fill. Um, the sheath that is currently riding in is this. This is an Armidus carry sheath. This is aftermarket. Um, the with market sheath is just a really simple, effective leather horizontal, no, leather, leather vertical carry sheath. So completely competent, but uh, this is just way cooler. You can have this uh, on your side, you can do cross draw with this one quite simply. And you know, cross draw is a, a good draw for people um, who like to tell everyone that they carry it cross draw and um, maybe every now and then do a bit of a tactical with their knife or. Um, I don't know, have support hand stuff going on if you are a, a that kind of person. But it just kind of feels cool to carry it there. That's why I carry it there, and I'm not afraid to say it. It feels cool to carry a cross draw knife. I like it. You can do all sorts of cool things in front of the mirror with your cross draw knife. And of course, it is, you know, practical enough as well. You can get to it with either hand, you know, with your non dominant hand really easily, and with your dominant hand quite easily as well. So that's the sheath. It's Kydex, it's uh, a tech lock type attachment, you know, it's great, really like it. Um, the leather one is fine too. You don't need to get this one for the knife package to be good, but I'm very lucky it came with this one for sure, because it's a nice one. In terms of flaws with the knife, there isn't any. This is about an optimal small companion knife. It really is, for my hand at least. Only caveat is this part of the handle here may not be what you're after. And you know, some people just don't like forward finger trolls as well, so that is, gonna be obvious, you're not gonna accidentally buy it because that is one heck of a forward finger troll. It's a two finger troll, almost two smaller finger troll for sure. But yeah, you can you know, you can shop accordingly. It's not, nothing that's gonna surprise you. It's really well done overall. I love the blade finish and coating and how, you know, how well it holds an edge. I like the placement of the gym ping. It's tasteful, not overbearing. The handle fits my hand well. It may not fit yours as great. It's got all the standard stuff. It's got a good lanyard hole. It's got a nice taper to it. It's got a good full flat grind, which I like for my outdoor sort of camp style knives. A little bit extra strength over the holy grind. Still slices and cuts really, really well too. Overall, this knife's a real win. Um, it's $220 about for one of these. Uh, you know, I, it's, I find it really hard to value these things. They seem to be somewhat limited run. They seem to have a fair bit of love and attention put into them. I think that's a pretty competitive price to get them from, you know, Blade HQ new. Uh, I got a really good deal with this one, but even at 220, I'd be happy to spend that and get such a good piece of steel on just a good blade and handle combination. So, look, if you're in the market for a, a smaller and you want to go production, I've sort of lately been sort of more suggesting if you want a knife about this size, you'd be able to get something about this price, maybe a little bit more from like a custom maker um, rather than a production house. So, but if you are after a production house to maybe get that slightly better name on your steel, then for sure, this is a really, really good option and I really wholeheartedly recommend. That's using my whole heart, not just a corner of it. All right, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching.